Hi guys, today I am going to explain you the concept of who is entitled to the remedies of a deceitful prospectus with the help of two case laws. Can you give me a short brief of prospectus? Please. Yes, why not? Prospectus is the soul of any company. On the basis of the contents of the prospectus, the general public makes up their mind whether to invest in that company or not. Hence, the statement in the prospectus holds a great gravity of being absolutely true. Then, what is a deceitful prospectus? Deceitful means deliberately misleading and thus deceitful prospectus means prospectus in which the statement is misleading in the form and context in which it is included and where there is any omission of a matter from the prospectus and this is made to mislead the public. <laughs> Alright, but what if there is any wrong information given in the prospectus and there is a loss suffered by the public because of relying on it? The liability accrues where any person subscribes for any shares or debentures on the faith of the prospectus for any loss or damage he may have sustained by reason of untrue statement included therein. So, we are ready now to go through the cases. A deceitful prospectus was issued by the directors on behalf of the company. Dad, what's the matter? What are you thinking? Nothing, son. I was thinking to buy a share of a company. But I think there's something wrong in the prospectus, and I am not sure about it. If you think there is something wrong, then don't buy the shares. But the company is earning good profits. Don't worry, son, I will see. Peak received a copy of Prospectus, but did not take any shares originally in the company. The allotment of shares to applicants was completed. Several months afterwards he bought 2,000 shares on the stock exchange. Dad, you are looking so sad what's the matter? Remember, we talked about the company for which I was confused for buying the shares. Oh that one. Yes, I remember. I bought the shares from the stock exchange and... I was right, the prospectus is untrue. Dad, you can sue the company. There are provisions and punishment for filling a deceitful prospectus. I think you are right. His action against the directors for deceit was rejected. It was observed by the court that the information in the prospectus was applicable to those who was intended to buy the shares through allotment. The office of a prospectus is to invite persons to become allottees, and allotment having been completed, such office is exhausted and liability to allottees does not follow the shares into the hands of subsequent transferees. The directors sent to Andrew, a prospectus, of the company, which they knew would be a sham, in order to induce him to purchase shares therein. What was in the courier, Andrew? Oh, that was the prospectus, of the company, was inviting to purchase shares. Are you interested? No, I am not. I am just feeling there is something wrong. I will wait and purchase the shares accordingly. Directors thereupon fraudulently published the telegram in newspaper. After eight months, the defendant sent a telegram to the UK that the company had struck gold and the information was printed in the financial news. The Andrew believing in the truth of the telegram applied and was allotted 50 shares. This company is sick. How can they publish a deceitful prospectus in a financial news? It's okay dear, companies do fraud. And it was not your fault. Let's change your mind, what should I order for you? I won't leave the company, they tried to induce me, twice. Okay, we will sue the company for fraud. Don't worry. The prospectus intended to induce the plaintiff both to subscribe the shares in Chile and also to buy from open market thereafter. The telegram was part of the prospectus. 
The function of the prospectus was not exhausted, and the false telegram was brought into play by defendants to reflect back upon and countenance the false statements in the prospectus. The plaintiff was induced to purchase the shares, and thus he has an action for damages and negligence. So, what do you learned from the case laws? Let me sum up for you. In total, the right to claim compensation for any loss or damages sustained by reason of any untrue statement in a prospectus is available only to the person who has subscribed for securities on faith of the prospectus containing untrue statement. The word subscribed denotes that the shares were acquired directly from the company by allotment. A subsequent purchaser of shares in the open market has no remedy against the company or the directors or the promoters. However, you have seen that in the second case, Andrew purchased the shares from the open market, but still he got the damages. This is because the prospectus was issued with the object of inducing persons to buy securities in the open market. Thus, we can conclude that any person who buys on the strength of false representation made in it has a right of action for fraudulent misrepresentation against the company. But one thing you must know is the allottee cannot both retain the shares and get damages against the company. You cannot take the benefit of both. You have to either choose the dividend or the damages. It's your choice. And like I always said, be aware. And I hope my family would watch out the prospectus. Isn't it? <laughs>